All right, well, first of all, welcome back, everybody. My name's Andrew, and you are watching the Kelly's Country Live. So, a lot of y'all have noticed in the background on my last several videos that I finally found a few more IBC totes. I've been looking for a while, and I've missed a few deals because I didn't have the time to drive far off to pick them up. But I found a few of these locally. They were a little higher than I wanted to pay, but the person did negotiate with me and got them down within a few dollars of what I like to pay for them. So, I was able to pick up four. I had a friend bring me over another one. So now I've got five new totes. So uh, we're gonna snatch these off today. I'm gonna modify one real quick in case you've never seen that. And we're gonna do some firewood splitting, load one of these up. All right, the first step whenever getting these is just remove these two top bars that's holding this bladder in, then you can take it right out. It's held on with torch bits, star bits, whatever you want to call them, but it's a T30. All right, now all we've got to do is flip this over, pull the bladder right out. All right, so the plan here is to cut out a large enough opening that you can get in and stack your firewood and pull it out. So from this bar to this bar, most people tend to cut out a small rectangular square right here. And uh, I find that works well for me too. Now you'll see a lot of people on YouTube using cutoff wheels. That works, but I have found a metal cutting blade and Sawzall to be far quicker and you don't run the risk of whenever this pinches the blade of it disintegrating and blowing apart. It just doesn't happen with a metal blade. You may bend it, but uh, it doesn't kind of blow up on you. Look at all that water just come out. Y'all see all that water coming out? That's why I'm doing this. So something that I like to do that I don't see a lot of people doing, look at all this water coming out, rust. It's already rusting on the inside the pipes. And I, now that these are cut open, they can get water in them. I like to drill a small relief hole right up in here to let the water come out. Otherwise, these are just going to rust out and I'm not going to get good life out of them. I think I'm going to start caulking these too. Put some silicone or caulk in there to try to keep a lot of the water out of this. It'll just extend the life of it. But if there's one thing I know, no matter what you do, water will eventually find its way in. So at least giving it some drain holes is probably the best thing I can do. All right, just like that, literally took a few minutes. I've got it prepped and ready for firewood. I'm going to drag this out of the way, knock the other three out, we'll go do some split.
one important thing I forgot to mention a, a minute ago. Whenever you cut the metal out of this, it's got sharp burrs everywhere. So one step I forgot to mention, just sand it down real quick, get rid of these burrs so they don't catch you or cut you. You know what, since we're up here, maybe we won't do quite so much splitting in this video. Let's go ahead and cut some roofs off on these. There's two different ways that people constantly talk about. So we might make this a tote and roof episode. We still may go do a little bit of split. So let's figure some roofs out to cover up this wood. All right, so based on everything I've seen online, you have pretty much two options to cover your firewood by utilizing these plastic bladders right here. These wind up being waste anyways for most people unless you've got one that can hold water, but not knowing what was in these, I had to assume it was a chemical and I'm not gonna store water in these. So they're either gonna get junked or we might as well put them to use. So the two roofs that I see that are most common, you can one, cut across here and then make, basically make a rain cap that'll go right over the firewood. I think that's gonna be my preferred method. Although you kind of have to bend and it barely wants to fit over the firewood. It looks like it's gonna be a little aggravating to get on. I might have to make some cuts up in it and flare it out. The other option is to make a big diagonal cut, corner to corner, then you wind up with two peaked roofs. It's a lot longer and wider that way. Supposedly it fits a little better. What I'm concerned about is, this is Florida. We get a lot of thunderstorms, hurricanes, tropical storms. It's windy. And that big old sticking up roof, I'm afraid is constantly gonna get blown off in all these afternoon thunderstorms that we get. But I think just for the sake of the video and for me figuring out myself, let's go ahead and cut both designs today and see which one we like. Are y'all okay? Sorry. Uh, that's why you buy a GoPro. Maybe I cut these wrong. That's definitely not symmetrical. Surely I wasn't supposed to cut that way. Maybe I was. All right, let's try the big diagonal cut on a tote that's mounted over like this. Just one of them little caps isn't gonna work. So I'm either always gonna have to be conscious of how high I stack my totes, or I'm gonna have to go to this design, which I'm still worried is just gonna constantly blow off. Unless I go through all the trouble of wiring it or zip tying it, which I guess that's not too much trouble. Well, I can tell you it doesn't fit very well on a mounted over tote because the wood's actually so slick against this, it's wanting to slide one way or another. The only way this is going to stay is if I drill holes and wire either side. Plus, I really don't like the way it looks. The good thing about it is it covers the entire top tote, 
which I don't think the caps are going to do very well. Let's uh, put a cap on this one right here. Now that actually fits really nicely, but I can still tell if we get a bad windstorm, this will probably blow off, but it's going to blow off. Uh, it's probably going to have a harder time blowing off than that one will. That's going to catch so much wind. Actually, probably one of the easier things to do now that I think about it is I'll just drill a hole and a couple spots on each end, come out here and just shoot a screw right into a couple pieces of firewood. That way there's four or so pieces of firewood holding this down. It probably isn't going anywhere like that. I think that's what I'll do. I can tell you all this warm weather and walking around these totes got me thinking about snakes. Tis the season. All right, I'm definitely liking the caps a whole lot better. I wish I hadn't even cut those diagonally now. The cap is the way to go. All right, well, I think for now, I'll stack some wood on top. I'll probably come back down here tomorrow, but I think I'm really liking my idea of bend the top down, shoot a screw in all four corners into a big heavy piece of wood and leave it that way till next year. Then all I gotta do is come out here and take four screws out and remove my cap. And whenever I wanna do my moisture testing, four screws, pretty simple. All right, oh, well, I've actually run out of time. I uh, took some time away from this video to work on a, another project that I'm recording. And for all y'all that's been enjoying the build series, whenever I just build random projects, I think you're really going to like the next one. I've had to do some critiquing on it today, but I think by tonight or tomorrow, I'll have it completely done, functioning properly. And I'm really excited to show this build off. It's something a lot of y'all might be interested in. It can save you a pile of money, and it's something that we all enjoy. So excited to share that one with you. So, uh, I really enjoyed this today. I now have all my totes covered. Did a little experimenting. Now I realize the way that I really do like to have uh, these covered. I'm gonna do the top caps. Eventually, I'm gonna clear this whole area out, get it looking nice. We'll do that on another episode. Push all this brush back here, get all the snake farm stuff going basically, clear it up. And ultimately down the road, I could wind up building a rack here with a tin roof to quickly put these under and pull them out as needed. We're just going to kind of have to see how this firewood thing works out and where I go down the road. But uh, for now, these are quick and cheap, cheap as in free. The totes already come with the bladders. Um, so why not? I'll keep cutting the tops off and use them as top caps. And I've still got quite a few more bladders out there that I'm going to do the same thing to to get the rest of these IBC totes covered. So off camera, I went ahead and cut uh, another one or two IBC totes that I had laying around. So I now have enough to fill looks like another two cords of wood plus we've been burning firewood like crazy although we want this week as hot as it's turned off and i now have right at three empty racks i have to fill too so i have several cords of uh open space here that i need to fill up we'll be doing that in some upcoming episodes the house stuff's rolling right along i'll have some uh, updates by this weekend for the live stream those of y'all that watch that and i'll try to let y'all know uh, on videos coming up but we are about to start the house build very quickly we already have the materials on the property. The uh, contractors then got it with me. We're about to lock down a date, and it's actually going to be a little sooner than I was thinking. So huge projects about to start. I'm going to take advantage of this warm weather and also finish up the storm shelter too. So lots of different things about to go on around our place. Thank you all so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed it.